Hi folks, this is Larry and I am excited to announce that we're going to be doing a four part series and it was going to be one video but I've done two recordings of it and both of the recordings lasted well over an hour and that's just too long for a video so what I've done now is I've broken it into four pieces and I'm going to record each one of those individually and then kind of you know give those to you uh, in sections but they're all part of one overall unit and what that is is how to start from scratch you've taken your DNA test and Ancestry has processed it and you finally got that email notification that your matches are done now what well that's what this video series is going to do and the very first step is clustering now unlike the leads method where you start with your first and second cousins and you copy them into Excel spreadsheet and then you you know look at and compare all of those who are related to the other one of those by doing the comparison and you color code those and then look and try to find a pattern well Ancestry now has built that all into their DNA beta match so now you don't have to use a third-party program like Excel and you don't have to copy all the names and the spellings and you don't have to color code click on a cell highlight the color click on another cell highlight the color it's, it's going to be point and click and we're going to do that from scratch so let's get started what we have here is we have my father-in-law's DNA and he just recently took a DNA test and got the results back and so we're going to be doing this with him you know he's here we're going to be doing this all together and we're going to be showing you from scratch how this works so we're going to view all DNA matches and so uh, we've shared it you can see this in my account and so what we did was we did like we did in that comparison video or collaboration video uh, he shared his trees with me and his DNA with me well he didn't have a tree he shared his DNA with me so this is where we're going to be we're, we're starting from scratch and I turned beta off because I wanted to let you that are just starting out just got onto Ancestry and you haven't turned it on yet we're going to do all of it together I don't want to miss any steps and I don't want to presume anything so we're going to go through this together so up at the top right hand corner you can see my cursor moving up here underneath my name it says beta off and there's a little slider and so if I click anywhere in here the slider goes to the right and turns on beta that's the first thing you have to do now the next thing I want to do is I want to cluster these people I want to make these people grouped up it kind of like the leads method it's it's kind of the same thing I mean the leads method basically is clustering related people and any kind of clustering clustering in itself is grouping together similar things so what we want to do is group together people who are similar in our case you know in genealogy we want to know about surnames and we want to know about family lines and put them together so that we can figure things out but we don't know anything we we have all these people some have you know big trees some have little trees uh, some have tiny trees unlinked trees and so we've got all types now the leads method as I said it starts with the first cousin uh, second cousin and keeps there I'm going to tell you for the purposes of doing this with the DNA beta clustering I prefer to start with the second cousins and the reason is first cousin share a grandparent I want to go out a little further because I want to get some line delineation that you know is more easily recognizable and I want to get it in one pass okay as best I can so what we're gonna do is you know right here is our second cousin level okay and I want to look for the biggest tree that's you know right there in the high center Morgan so 298 you know this is almost double in the 500s so unlinked I don't know the size of those but here's a 463 so I'm just gonna start with Sheila and so we don't know what family name she's connected to so I'm gonna add a custom group and I'm just gonna call her line one so we're at line number one we don't know anything about it anything about her line one so we clicked on the matches and so you know we've given her a yellow and we've called her line one now with this if I click here and I assign all the matches to line one you notice how I'm clicking on it and I'm having to go you know to the left or excuse me to the right and click away because I can't go to the next one because ancestry saw fit to make this here instead of putting that point over to the left <laughs> and saying hey right here it's put it underneath and it covers up the one below which makes this very annoying so I'm gonna tell you the way to get around this is you're gonna have to find the bottom of the list that you're wanting to do so we're going to use 100 centimorgans as our cutoff so we're gonna come down to the 100 centimorgan line 
Okay, so here's 102 and there's fourth cousin. So, you know, I told you we're dealing right about the fourth cousin. We'll go ahead and include this one because it's right here. So we're going to go right here. We're just going to go from 100 centimorgans up. And so basically we're dealing with third cousins and up. And we're going to color code every single person uh, to be part of these lines. Now, if you time this, I believe this is going to take approximately one minute to do this first one. And it gets shorter as we go along. I was going to cut this out because, you know, this is just a bunch of me pointing and clicking and, and basically talking and filling time. But I also decided that I was going to leave this because one of the things that I hear a lot is, oh, that will take too long. And this is, you know, that's just too much to do. Um, I've actually posted on some Facebook forums recommending that they do this. And it's like, well, that takes too long. And so what I want to do is just give you an example of exactly how long does it take. And it, it's going to take almost one minute so if you look at when I clicked this last one here to the time that you know we started so we're done there uh, if you pause the video here look back we're not that far into the video and if you go back to where this was you can see that that took about one minute all right so this doesn't take long and that was actually the longest one so now we've got our first line we've got our line one shows right here and that's yellow okay now when we go through here, we're going to look at the next one. We're, again, I like to start at the second cousin level. So we, we started here because I had a big tree, but we're going to go now to the second cousin level, the next one. And we don't have anybody for this one. So we're going to create another group. We're going to call this line two, number two. Line number two, we're going to save it. And we're going to pull up uh, Brandon here. We're going to look at all of his shared matches. And we're going to color code them the exact same way. Uh, we did before, but we're not going to start at the top. <laughs> we're going to start it at out the 100 centimorgan level, uh, which you know is a little bit above the fourth cousin level right there. Uh, we could go on down to the fourth cousin level if we wanted, but uh, uh, let's just go ahead and do it. it, it 90, that's close enough. So we'll just say, again, we're in theory starting at the 100, but we're just going to time this again. So, you know, click start on your watch or whatever, and we'll just see how long it takes to... Uh, define this or cluster this second group of family members so here we go we're on line two and uh, we're almost done and you know that didn't take very long did it so we're getting to the top uh, what are we at 145 and coming to the top gotta make sure we click this because sometimes it doesn't click and it shows up as a, a spot that we'd be looking for there uh, getting into the seconds and again, like I said, I would cut this out, but I really don't want to skip anything. So we're just going to kind of go through this together. And even though it's kind of a filler time, like I said, this video is going to be kind of longer. It's going to seem rambly at points because we're filling space. But again, I don't want to go over anything and assume it and you not really fully understand how it's done. So there it was. So that was about a minute for, you know, the second one. So now you can start to see in our match list, uh, see the close ones right here, you know, right here and on up, they've got both. And, you know, that's the reason you don't start with the high centimorgans and color code going down. Uh, you start a little further out. Okay. So we're going to pull out a little further here and get uh, somebody that uh, doesn't have their stuff color coded. Here's one. So we can go to Wanda. And add to group, we're going to create a custom group. This is going to be line number three. And let's give it a color that's easier to distinguish from the other ones. Just give it a green. Save it. Go to the shared matches. And again, we're going to go down to the 100 centimorgans. Uh, right here, we're fourth cousin. So we're really doing everything third cousins. I got two line number threes. Did I save that twice? Let's delete the group. Let's see. Make sure I've got the group still. Uh, line number three. There we go. Line three. I clicked save twice, Ancestry gave me two of the exact same thing. That was interesting. Same color, same number. I wonder if that was a glitch or whether it really saved twice. Only Ancestry could tell us that. All right, so this one, because we've already done some, uh, these are going to take even less. I mean, this is going to take like 30 seconds or so uh, unless I, you know, quit being able to click on this. So we're at the 30 second mark and you can see we're already at the top of the list. And here we go, we got three more. And so 
line number three took us what about 30 seconds so took a minute for line one about a minute or so for line two and you know really line three is you know almost the same so here's another one that doesn't have a group so we're just going to call this one line four so add to group create a custom group call this one line number four and again we want to make sure that it's easy to distinguish from the other ones we'll give it a blue color okay look at the shared matches and uh, we've already got a lot of orange but we have some blanks in here so uh, I'll tell you what that means here in a second uh, this is 90 there's 100 up here but we've done all the rest of them all the third cousins so we might as well just do this one to the third all the third cousins and stuff so we actually went lower we went to about 90 and included everybody third cousin and higher so uh, in this everybody's third cousin and higher and believe it or not we're almost done with line four here even though it's been about 10 seconds uh, there's just not that many in this list that weren't in the other list so here we go line four three more line four line four and line four so even with the talking even with making mistakes on the clicking that probably took what five minutes total so we've created four lines and we have now clustered uh, pretty much all of our matches that were third cousin and closer that is amazing now I can tell you right now it'll take you longer than that to type all the names or copy and paste and sort it out uh, over into using the leads method and then you gotta click on the cells and do that so it's certainly much faster much more accurate and it's easier to see you can see the information right here and what information does it show us well looky here we notice there's a lot of orange and blue now there's some that are blue only and uh, but you know orange and blue and the reason is is because we're dealing with the blue matches here so we go back here to the master list we see yellow and green we see yellow yellow and green so over here we see orange and orange and blue orange yellow and green yellow and so what we've done we've got clusters and we've already started dividing out the family lines that's right we've already been dividing out the family lines so we've got this yellow and green and we've got that pretty consistent through here yellow and green yellow and green down here and we've got the orange and the orange and blue and we got the orange and orange and blue and so what we've done is we've actually segmented off we know one side of the family is going to be orange and blue and the other side is going to be yellow and green again we don't know we're starting from scratch and we're just going to kind of figure this out as we go along so what better place to start than the person we started with so let's look at their tree now we have Harold Kennedy and Sheila and I'm not going to pretend to pronounce the name because I know I'll get it wrong don't want to insult anybody but we look here her father's name was Kennedy so her maiden name is actually Kennedy so we have Kennedy 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 so we've got you know kind of a home run we're gonna ignore this over here I mean we see this because you know I've linked his DNA to our tree already but we're not gonna do the common ancestor we're gonna pretend that part of the page doesn't exist so what we do know is we have 523 centimorgans to her so what does 523 centimorgans mean well we put in 523 and that tells us that we're probably looking at a first cousin once removed so at a first cousin once removed we know that when you're dealing with you know remove situations it's the person that's closest is who you deal with and we know first cousins the MRCA will be the grandparent well Harold is 76 and this girl looks to be younger than 76 so I'm gonna think she's the younger generation and Harold's closer so what that means is uh, it's gonna be three steps up for her and two steps up for Harold so we come up here here's where she is we go one two three steps for her and we go down to one and then two to where Harold would be now what this means is there uh, Carter Waterman Kennedy and RV Caldonia Drake it looks like would be the grandparents of Harold and again we've got this shortcut because it said Kennedy uh, it just randomly pulled up but again I'm I'm doing it just like you would you may find this you may have to cross and triangulate this but we're gonna start right here and we put in her 523 centimorgans first cousin once removed so let's say that Delbert was Harold's father well then that would make Jimmy Harold's brother and that would make her the niece so we, we come back over here 
uh, reset this so everything shows up. Uh, niece in there would be 1750, 1349 to 2175. Well, she was 523. So we know that now that Harold's dad is not Delbert because that would make her a niece and that would make her a much higher Cinemorgan. And because it's only 523, we know that you have to go up to and down and that Delbert isn't the most common, uh, most recent common ancestor. So what that tells us is we have another child of Carter, Waterman Kennedy, and R.V. Caldonia Drake. And because the name is Kennedy, and that's a Kennedy, we know that it's another male. So we don't know how many sons there were. Uh, we know there's at least two because we know it's not Delbert. <laughs> so uh, we could find out all the sons here, and maybe there's only two, and we know the other one's it. So, but we don't know this, but we do have a strong, strong inclination right now that this yellow is going to be the Kennedy line and probably Kennedy Drake, Kennedy Drake, uh, McElroy and whatever this one is, because we know that's not her maiden name of Drake. So right here is going to be one of these four surnames or one of these two surnames is based on this yellow. So let's see if we can figure out where Harold really fits. So let's look at a closer match. And this is where your closer matches really come in handy. So let's look up here. We got a first, uh, it says first or second cousin. It says 973. So we're going to come up here into the DNA painter and we're going to enter 973. And it's going to tell us that we're looking for a first cousin or a grandchild or a great niece or nephew. Well, it's not a grandchild. He would know who his grandkids are. So we're looking for a great niece or nephew or a first cousin. Because it's a girl, we know it's going to be a great niece, not a great nephew, or a cousin. So at 973, what do we got? Uh, well, we've got that same Carter and RV, but we've got a different son here, which is Bryant. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to do just like before. We're going to say, okay, is Harold underneath Bryant? And if so, what are the results? Well, if Harold was the son of Bryant, then this person right here would be Harold's sister. And that would make this male here Harold's nephew. And that would make his daughter his great niece. Now, we come over here, great niece, 910. That was one of our options. Well, what if it was a first cousin? So first cousin match would mean that Harold and this person, Stephanie, share the same grandparent. So there's the parent, there's the grandparent. So uh, if Harold shared this grandparent on any one of these sides, uh, it, then it wouldn't be 973. Okay. And it also wouldn't triangulate to the other person that we had, because when you triangulate, it has to work for all the people. You don't do one, you know, because you do one, it could fit in a variety of places, you know, but that's why the DNA painter uh, shows it could be here or here or here. It could fit in a variety of places. But when you start triangulating with your different matches, you start getting uh, it can only be in one of these places. Okay. Uh, let's see what kind of tree Batten has. Here's Kitty Redding. There's Ira Redding and Olga. Uh, Ira Redding. So, do, do we have an Ira Redding in one of the others? Did, let's see if Stephanie had an Ira. There's Ira Redding. So there's Phyllis Marie Redding, Ira Redding. So now we've got that other match that had a Redding, which was this uh, bat and ball. It's got the orange and blue. And we look over here, we've got the Ira and the Olga, but it says Kizzy instead of Phyllis. So that tells us that we're probably looking in the right area with the Reddings with our orange and blue. And it also tells us that our yellow uh, and green or yellow particularly was over on the Kennedy side. So at this point, we are pretty certain that our yellow line is going to be the Kennedys. But we're going to, you know, just check, you know, another time here. So we, here is a yellow only. So they wouldn't have redding. So we look here. Do we see any reddings? No. Okay. So we do have the Kennedy and Drake's. Okay, so we know now that the yellow is a Kennedy Drake. So we can come up here, click on that, and instead of line one, we're going to rename this. Okay, so we know it's paternal side now because it's his father, the Kennedy, and we're going to say Kennedy and Drake. 
So we know it's the Kennedys and Drakes, okay? So we save that, we've renamed this group, so now everybody in our list that's yellow, we know that they are Kennedy Drakes, anybody that has yellow. So the ones that are green, that's something else. But let's see if we can find out what the oranges are now. We are pretty sure it has something to do with the redding, but let's see if we can find an orange only. Uh, and that might be easier if we looked in our oranges. <laughs> so we look at our orange only, and we're going to be, at this point, we're looking for reddings. So they don't have anything useful for us in their tree. And uh, here's four people. Uh, Caldwell, okay, Caldwell and Far. There's nothing that we can tell that's useful in that line so far. And uh, here's an unlinked. Uh, I can tell you just by that one's not a public tree. It shows up as if it is, but it won't, so I won't waste our time with that. Uh, see, that was the Carol Beers. There's another one, no tree. Uh, this one has both, so we'll just take a look and see what names we get with both. And uh, do we have any? There's Redding, okay. And uh, do I see any other names? So we've got a Redding there. We don't know what the, the blue is, but we're pretty sure that one's... Uh, going to be there so here we go with another one this one is orange only uh, do we have anything uh, we have uh, jolly and this name is well over here it says called well but i'd have to click on it and this kind of sucks ancestry i'm sorry making me click on this to see the profile i know you're trying to make sure that people buy your subscription and that's the only reason you've done that but it is very annoying give us the pop-up box uh, just like here, you know, Alexander Lafayette Caldwell. I want to see the pop-up box on that other screen. You did it before. You took it away. Put it back. Anyway, so this is Caldwell. we got Caldwell and Jolly. Okay, Alexander Lafayette, Mary Jolly. And uh, uh, so we got Caldwell and Jolly, but we don't see Redding. So now we're going to go back. And did we have any Caldwell or Jollies in uh, the one that Stephanie had? So we're going to go back up here. And here was the Caldwell. Okay, so we had Redding, and the Caldwell was above Redding. So let's see if she has any of the ancestors there. Well, there we go. We have Alexander Lafayette Caldwell and Mary Melinda Jolly. So now we know that Caldwell, Jolly, and Redding are all under you know this side. So we've got the uh, orange, and we've got the blue. And so now we need to see if we got Redding's or who we had over here that was only on the one side. So that one didn't have anybody uh, looking again. There was a large one that was only. So we're looking for Redding, Caldwell, and Jollies. And there's Jolly. There's that Alexander Lafayette, Caldwell. So we got uh, Lafayette. They got Caldwell, Jollies, that married above. So we can now say that this is Caldwell, Jollies. All right? So this line is going to be maternal. Maternal, and then we could say Caldwell Jolly, and it could be some Reddings in there because we did have some Reddings in there, so we'll just add Redding to that. All right, so now we're going to go back and we're going to look at green, and we're going to look for anybody's green only. But now, say we got the yellow, which we've already designated as paternal Kennedy Drake, so we know this is going to be a paternal. Uh, can we find any greens with a tree? Yep, there's uh, green with a tree that's by itself. Uh, Layman, Sutton, Drake. Okay, so we got a Drake. Uh, are any more like that? This one only has four. What are the odds we get a Drake here? Oh, we did. Uh, got another Drake. And so we can tell then the green is going to be Drake. And so we can, at this point, come up, uh, edit the green, and this is going to be uh, paternal. And this is Drake. Okay. So now we want to check out our blues, our line four, and see what we can find out for line four. Uh, that tree, ah, come on. Got it hidden from it, got it locked. May have to contact him. Don't know. Here's one with 15 people. Uh, what do we got here? Redding. All right. So we kind of got lucky here. That's a Redi Redman and a Redding. And Sarah Louisa, we saw that before. Somebody, Sarah Louisa doesn't have their uh, ancestors on that. So we're pretty sure this is going to end up being Redding, but we're going to double check, see if we can find that with uh, another one. Uh, that one we just looked at, 15. This one has 125. 
Uh, we're looking for redding. There we go, uh, reddings. So we know now that this blue is going to represent uh, the reddings, and the redding is on the maternal side. So here we go, maternal, and then redding. And there you go. So what we have now is we have clustered all the family units from third cousins, all third cousins and closer. And so let's go back and look, go back to all matches. There's 122,000 matches here. And you'll find that the older the person that tests is, the, the more matches they probably have because they're a little closer in that connection generally. So here we go. Look at all this. We've got the color coding. Now here's one that didn't show up. This is what's really great. Now we've, we've got one. Let's see if, if there's any more that aren't in a cluster already. There is another one. You know, here's a, okay, this is great. We've got a lock tree and we can kind of, you know, tell here the common ancestor. So we're going to kind of uh, look at Miss Mud Pie, but without looking at the left, we're going to look at the shared matches and we're going to tell where she is. Now look at all these solid oranges. We know that's the Caldwell Jolly Redding on the maternal side. So we know this person, even though I don't have access to their tree, we know which side of the tree they're on automatically. Now, I guess we could have looked, and I think it's got a, sh uh, a shared thing on the tree, Caldwell. So, yeah, it did turn out that it was Caldwell, but we supposedly don't know that at this time. So this is what clustering is. And you get to see, you know, here's the crossovers. Like the leads method, you'd be looking, you know, here's this person in this column, here's this person in another column, here's column three, here's column four, and you'd be looking at it. And, you know, this is a lot easier because now, uh, well, A, <laughs> it took only five minutes to do. B, uh, it's one click to the trees. I'm, I'm not, you know, say, hey, I, this person over here, let me go check their tree. It's all right here, right here together on one page and I get to click it, and I get to go and look at the trees and examine it. I, I do wish that it did the pop-up boxes like it used to. It's a real shame that it doesn't do it. So uh, that's clustering with the Ancestry DNA, and as you can see, now we've uh, taken it. We've got the paternal line, which is the Kennedy Drake, and we've also segmented off the Drakes, so we know his... Uh, father's mother's line and then his father's father's line would be the yellows without the green same thing on the other side for the mother we got redding and then we got the caldwell jollies and so we can kind of start segmenting that off and so when do we start building our tree we'll be able to cross reference them but we've actually gone a huge step in just this little short period of time in finding out what the family surnames are now we haven't proven our tree we haven't built a tree but we do know how everybody's clustered. We can tell who's in what family line. And so later when we have questions, we're going to know exactly who to, to try and contact. We'll talk about that in a video. But we have clustered all of our families. We've designated the line up at a much higher level. That's step one. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. This is the DNA clustering. Again, uh, I don't know what to call this method. You know, the Leeds method was named after Dana Leeds. I'd call this the Jones method, except that I don't really know if I'm Jones or Basie or Brown or, or what name I should take on. So we'll just call this the Ancestry Clustering or whatever. Uh, I'll let you all determine what you want to call it. But this is hands down the best, the fastest way to go through your family, you know, DNA matches find your surnames and figure out your tree. So this is step one in clustering. This is the first in, you know, like I said, the multi-part series. And uh, pass this around to your friends. This is a very important video. Uh, if if nothing else, you know, just re-watch this video. I'd, re I'd prefer you re-watch this video than to watch, you know, two or three of the other ones. That's how important this is. Learn how to cluster these people. Start at your second cousins and start grouping them like we've done here and looking for those common surnames and figure out the surnames that go with those you know, colors and then bam, you're there. I uh, hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, pass it around to your friends. It's very important. Share it with your, you know, your groups, your genealogical groups. Uh, this one is probably the singular most important video 
uh, that I've done to date, the most valuable one that I've done to date. It will help you out more in so many ways than even we've shown here, but we are going to show those in a future video. So stay tuned for the next videos. Uh, they'll be coming out pretty soon. And before we sign off this video, I want to do some announcements here at the end. Uh, of course, you're already coming to the YouTube channel and you'll notice that I've changed the, the picture. This is the Palace of Versailles. And I've made comments, you know, I'm from Texas and the rumor is everything's bigger in Texas. Uh, no, this isn't superimposed and stretched or anything like that. This is the building and I'm, <laughs> it's bigger than this. It is the biggest freaking building I have ever seen. And to say that it's big is like <laughs> such an understatement. But anyway, that is now the, the video for the, the channel. But I also want to announce uh, the Instagram channel. And you can see here uh, I announced that it's also YouTube, you know, from there. But uh, on the, the Twitter, it's at DNA Family Trees. And some of you asked for pictures from the Paris trip. And you can see like, like here, this is the, the Hall of Battles. Uh, this is one of the rooms in the Palace of Versailles, you know, Sign River. Uh, Notre Dame Cathedral stood for 800 years, six days before I go there, it burns. What are the odds? And then, of course, here's the picture of the palace. And uh, some of the, the greatest information, like in uh, the Louvre there, it was not just like the Mona Lisa and the things on the wall, but the ceilings were incredible. Uh, and, of course, you know, Paris, the iconic Eiffel Tower, uh, and the you know the arc i'm not even gonna try a trump and uh yeah, i know every one of you <laughs> who speak french are now rolling your eyes at me and i apologize but this is from the top and and this isn't a panoramic this is just a shot it's actually a circular uh you know it's a circle underneath you know the arc and the buildings they're actually shaped like this and this is with the eiffel tower there it was one of the most beautiful views in the world uh, and this is on the other side of the palace. You know, you saw it on the other side and you can see from here just the shapes. If you imagine those two shapes together, you kind of start putting it together. It was incredible. Uh, the trip was incredible. And of course, you know, you go to Paris, see the Mona Lisa. And yeah, her eyes really do follow you no matter where you go in the room. Uh, so uh, I'll start putting some of the stuff up on the Instagram for people to see there. There's requests. And I've also started a Facebook group because one of the difficult things is, is, you know, I can chat with a person, they have information and they have a question and I answer them specifically, but I really want us to get to be more of a community. So I've created a uh, Facebook group and, uh, you know, you can see that link there, but there's also links uh, over here uh, on the YouTube on the about Okay, and all the links for Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon are there. And I've also created a Twitter account, and it'll be announcing, like, also you can find on the Twitter account is here. And anytime, I've actually been putting out information as the videos were coming out. Uh, I've been trying to make this go live so you can see, uh, you know, for a while now, for about a month, I've been putting them out on Twitter, trying to get things going and uh, you know get into the process so that this really is an organized thing on the back end rather than me just winging it as we go along but you know if you follow the twitter account you'll you know get notifications of things that are coming up and maybe some things you know like that uk instead of making a video for that i'd much rather you know tweet that out or put it in the facebook group and instead of you know creating a whole video about it and then there's a lot of things that you ask a question on one video and uh, somebody else watching another video comes up with that same question. So I end up, you know, I answer it on one and then I answer it on the other. And I think if we get together as a community in the Facebook group uh, and even on the Twitter feeds, uh, we'll be able to communicate a little bit better. And the best thing here is when I'm helping somebody, you can add a photo or video to your question. Whereas when you're dealing with the YouTube comments, you can't really add that. And that's, you know, really hurts uh, me being able to help you in the way that I'd like to help you. And lastly, you know, this is interesting. We'll see who gets to be the first Patreon. Uh, there's a Patreon account and, you know, just uh, at different levels, a dollar a month or, you know, $5 a month, whatever it is to, uh, you know, put, you know, just, just a little to help offset some of the cost of putting this together and to help me, 
and support me in this endeavor to help me support you in this endeavor. And so I appreciate anybody that would, you know, become a Patreon here and there's different levels and I'm not going to solicit it. You know, uh, you can see it, it's there and I will refer to the Patreon, but I'm not going to, you know, push yet. So the Patreon, the Twitter account, the Facebook group and Instagram, along with the YouTube are now up and those will allow us to communicate, you know, a little bit better. Uh, like I said, the, uh, Facebook group will allow us to add pictures to our questions and then I can add pictures to the answer and I think that's really going to help on the comments. Now that's going to actually hurt on the uh, the YouTube because the algorithm says hey you get all this engagement and it loves me more and more and I hate to really push away from that but my goal isn't about getting this YouTube engagement rating or getting all these brownie points from YouTube and don't get me wrong I, I love that but I really am about helping you and helping solve problems. You know, you, you've heard my story, it's right here. You can pause it and read it again real quick. But I, I want to help other people in this situation. And so I believe that when you help other people, uh, the rest kind of falls, you know, in line. You know, I, I really want to set my goal to helping you and then whatever is behind will will shore it up as as we need so i just want to announce that we do have four sites we have the instagram site which has the pictures from my recent trip to paris uh, the genealogical facebook group which is called genealogy family tree and research because that's what it is family tree and research uh, dna family trees on twitter and then on patreon again dna family trees the only one that i had to do differently uh, I believe was, uh, was it uh, Instagram? No, DNA Family Trees. I uh, was able to do the same on all of them. So check out those uh, sites and join those sites when you get a chance. I know, you know, I've asked you to already subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe. Click the bell notification. That way you get notified and, uh, you know, you get uh, notified when something comes out. But more importantly, I want you to take the time to go and join the Facebook, join the Twitter so that I can communicate to you and we can create a group where you can help guide me on the topics. You know, what is the biggest pain point you can tell me so that I can help you. Again, I appreciate you all. Thank you for listening and you guys have a great week.